everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode three. Last time we began our playthrough proper with an established character. We went in to go and close the breach. Uh, obviously, we didn't succeed, as you can see by the glowing, gaping hole in the sky. Uh, we will have to come back to that, but we have reformed the Inquisition of old, apparently. Uh, not everyone is in unanimous approval of that, but regardless, we're going to do what we can to seal this breach for the good of Thetis. Um, I have a new clothes on, and I hate how it is. The weird jacket is protruding. I need to put on my uh, I need to put on my original clothes that we had before the cutscene took place. Um, I think we should still have that. Yes, we do. You got give it a new apprentice coat. I'm not an apprentice, not anymore. I wield my oh, my light armor of the dragon with complete with floating parts. There we go, perfect. All right, we're going to report to Haven's Chantry, but before we do that, uh, there is a whole little town of Haven here for us to go and uh, investigate. We'll get to know some people, and I think that's probably the best course of action. I think. Yes, I think we had a codex entry drop at the end of last episode. So let's quickly take a read of that. Why isn't it letting me scroll? Yeah. It's not letting me scroll. That's weird. It used to let me scroll. What has happened? For some reason I can't... I can scroll here? That's fine. But I can't scroll here. But I used to. That's weird. Okay. The first Inquisition. Doing some light reading for the beginning of our episode. The birth of the Chantry took place more than nine ages ago. The mists of time have obscured once well-known facts. It is commonly believed the Chantry alone created the Templars in the Circle of Magi. Few recall there was ever an Inquisition. Those who do believed it predated the Chantry, hunting cultists and mages in a reign of terror, ending only upon its transformation into the Templar Order. This is not quite the truth. One must keep in mind the state of Thetis prior to the Chantry's creation, a world where the only source of order, the Tevinter Imperium, had fallen apart. People blamed magic for the death of Andraste, the blight, the terror they saw every day, and not without reason. Abominations and demons rampaged the countryside. No one was safe. Disparate groups of men and women initially formed the Seekers of Truth, determined to re-establish order because no one else would do what was necessary. The truth they sought, the question they tried to answer, was how to restore sanity in a world gone mad. Was theirs a reign of terror? Perhaps. Evidence suggests they were as vigilant in their protection of mages as they were of regular people. When they intervened, they convened an ad hoc trial to determine the guilty party. This even application of justice led to their poor reputation. The Seekers came down against every group at one time or another, their Inquisition gaining notoriety for being on no one's side but their own. They considered themselves good people, however, followers of the Maker's true commandments. This was never more evident than when they lay down their banner in support of the fledging Chantry. They believed with all their heart that the Templar Order was the answer a desperate Thetis needed in a terrible time. Ultimately, the Inquisition was composed of independent idealists, not Chantry zealots. That is the truth, from a certain point of view. Nice, okay. But the Inquisition is now reborn. Why won't it let me... Oh, okay, it'll let me scroll here. Oh, I can scroll now. I've gained the ability to scroll. How wonderful. Okay. Um, How can you be so calm with everything we believe called into question? I don't need some old woman in Valroya to tell me how to worship the Maker. We tend the sick, feed the poor, clothe the naked, and sing the chant. Seeker Pentagast will attend to the rest. And make her forgive anyone who gets in her way. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> if we take a look at the map, I think we've got... Yes, we do have our companions. Which is nice. I think... First and foremost, I need to go speak to my dwarf brother! <laughs> Where is he? Hang on. Uh, he is just off to the right here. We'll talk to all the other people later. There he is! Varric, Varric, Varric! I'm your adoring fan! 
Just please talk to me. So, now that Cassandra's out of earshot, are you holding up all right? I mean, you go from being the most wanted criminal in Thetis to joining the armies of the faithful. Most people would have spread that out over more than one day. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I, I wake up, I got this... I don't even know why I got sent to this place. I wake up with this stupid glowing pain in my hand. And it's like then some random bald guy starts shoving my hand in holes without my consent. And apparently I'm the chosen one. This is all bullshit. None of this shit should have happened. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. For days now, we've been staring at the breach, watching demons and maker knows what fall out of it. Bad for morale would be an understatement. I still can't believe anyone was in there and lived. Yes, why did you stay? My character, right? You see that little... She, she's looking a bit angry right now, so her nose has, has gone up like this. <laughs> My character's default face, I'm so happy with. I'm like, yes, I've created this uh, good-looking character. And then every time there's, like, sadness or anger involved, the face contorts <laughs> in such a weird way. Looking like a completely different person. If it was that bad, why did you stay? Cassandra said you were free to go. I like to think I'm as selfish and irresponsible as the next guy, but this? Thousands of people died on that mountain. I was almost one of them. And now there's a hole in the sky. Even I can't walk away and just leave that to sort itself out. The breach needs to be sealed. The sooner the better. If it can be sealed, you might want to consider running at the first opportunity. I've written enough tragedies to recognize where this is going. Heroes are everywhere. I've seen that. But the hole in the sky, that's beyond heroes. We're going to need a miracle. Damn, okay. Hold on, sir, I have more questions. Your number one adoring fan has more questions, if you so please to indulge me, sire. Need something? Oh, okay. Whoop. Zoom in. Oh. I can move the camera in these types of conversations. Nice. I can see us both just having very intimate eye contact here, Varric. Sparks are flying. <gasps> Wait a minute. I was too busy looking at Varric's gorgeous head that I have questions about Hawk. Okay, hang on. Yes, I have questions about Hawk. I read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. Investigate, okay. I wish to... I wish to get the truth out of you, sir. What happened back during the events of Dragon Age 2? Our character looks directly at the camera. Orsino's fate made no sense. You made up the Arashok fight and we're a Hawk's friends. I love how there's literally just like, hey, you made this up. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll go in order. Orsino's fate made no sense. Yeah, Orsino's fate made no sense. I, I thought he was against uh, doing blood magic. What do you mean he turned into a goddamn zombie pile? In the book, you say that first enchanter Orsino turned himself into a giant monster made of corpses. How? Why? Do I look like an expert on magical weirdness to you? Well, I can't tell you how. For the why, all I can say is he was desperate. Investigate options shouldn't come with companion approval or disapproval. They're just questions. Okay, well, if I say Orsino's fate made no sense, um, telling him that he made something up is sure to get disapproval as well. But I want to know what he has to say. It's only a slight disapproval. I'll get his approval later, one way or another. There's no way Hawk really could have killed the Arashok. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently the Arashok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, we will never speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. <laughs> we will never speak of this again. Yes, the Arashok, he was a rogue element. Okay. 
he didn't disapprove of us telling him that we made something up, but he disapproved of us questioning why the, the Orsino's fate made no sense. That's the developers being like, how dare you question? How dare you question this? Orsino turning into a bumbling zombie pile all of a sudden is totally fine. That's the developers disapproving of us saying that, guys, not Varric. Where are Hawk's friends? Where are the rest of Hawk's associates now? Meryl decided to look after the elves left homeless by the fighting. She's done a pretty good job of keeping them away from the mages and Templars, so far. I guess she has plenty of practice avoiding stupid human battles with her old Dalish clan. Isabella went back to the raiders. She's calling herself an admiral now. I don't know if she's actually in charge or just has a really big hat. Might be the same thing, honestly. Sebastian went back to Starkhaven. I'm sure he's boring <laughs> all sorts of people there. Hawk's little sister is in the Free Marches, helping some of the other survivors from the Kirkwall Circle. Aveline is still guard captain. I'm pretty sure Kirkwall would fall into the sea if she quit her job. Notorious Raider trash. Nice. He does abruptly end conversations, doesn't he? Oh, I'm not even done with you, sir. Um, that's funny. Aveline's still guard captain. Bethany's doing circle mage stuff and helping out people, which is nice. Meryl's helping people out too. Fenris is dead. <laughs> I, I love how he doesn't mention that part. He's like, yes, um, Anders, as you probably know, uh, is dead. Fenris is dead. <laughs> Sebastian is boring. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> okay. We've got a codex entry about raiders in Tales. Tales. You want to know about my raider friends, huh? What in the world would make a goody-goody like you poke your nose in such a dirty business? Well, there's good Sir Taddeus, of course. Some people say he runs the Armada. He doesn't. No one does. The Armada is a collection of ships, and each one is like a nation unto itself. Its own rules, its own people, its own leader. Taddeus is respected, of course. You don't sink a half dozen Orlesian frigates without earning at least some respect. He's a dangerous man, but he's no king of the Armada. Anyone tells you that, they're lying or misinformed. Then there's Lachlan Poole. Likes to sail around the southern cape of Ravane, rattling his saber and posturing like it means something. No one really cares what Lachlan Poole does, though only a fool will say that to his face. You see, the thing about Lachlan Poole is he's got gold. Lots of it. All earned through legitimate means, even. He still has a trading company somewhere in the marches and hires people to run it while he plays adventurer on the high seas. The Armada lets him do it because it always pays to have friends with coin. The one you should really watch out for is Yanto. They call him the Talon, the Terror of Lemeron, but most often that crooked bastard what might kill you in your sleep. Slavery, murder, torture, nothing is too much for Yanto. He'd traffic in souls if he discovered a way to extract them from people. In fact, I'm sure he has some Tevinter cronies working on that right this second. I'm sure there's coin to be made in stolen souls somewhere. The Imperium, probably. Isabella, self-proclaimed Queen of the Eastern Seas. <laughs> Proclaims herself the Queen of the Eastern Seas, but then is like, this man is definitely not the one who runs the Armada. If he says that, you know, he's lying and misinformed. Interesting that the only codex entry that we get after talking about our friends is one to do with Isabella. No Meryl, Aveline, Bethany, or otherwise. Just Isabella. Curious. I wonder why. Varric, sir, please, sire, I know you're a busy man around this uh, warm campfire, but I have questions, please. Need something? Yes. Um, I have a personal question. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Towards extravagant lies, yes. This is the this is the funny part. Is all of Dragon Age 2 is a story. And it's not a story in the general sense of the word, but it's Varric's story. And it's great because it puts a lot of stuff into some variation of questionability. Like what actually happened? And I think it's I think it's great. I I think it's 
conflicting because we like things to be true. We like things to be in cement in terms of what actually happened, how characters interact with each other, the story that we have in our mind so that in future titles or when we think about it, we want to know what actually happened, you know, especially when you're trying to get a story right. So an unre unreliable narrator or a story that's being told from a character's point of view becomes a point of tension for, for people because you're like, well, did that actually happen? Did it? You know, and then we, we play this third game and now... We have Varric being like, yeah, just so you know, I'm inclined towards extravagant lies. And it's just like this thing where the events of Dragon Age 2 obviously happened, but the details, how specific did certain things play out, you know? And I guess that's their way of saying the the finer details don't matter as much as the, the broader tale that is being told here. Um, but it's definitely an interesting take. I'm not opposed to it at all. I kind of think it's a great little meta narrative of having an in-universe character recount a tale and then there's room for things to be a bit more exaggerated it allows for some fun like that scene of Varric going into his manor and going Scarface on everybody before being reined in to tell the actual story is just is great it's just funny stuff like that that really allow it to shine where are you from Varric? Are you from Ferelden, Olay? Free marches, born and raised in Kirkwall. And despite whatever you've heard, no, Kirkwall's not that bad. Okay, what do you what do you do? I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant? I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. Businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network and occasionally. I write books. His voice is a little quiet in the passive conversations than the, um, the scripted one we had before. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do Leliana's job? Because you're a spy. If you've run a spy network, why is Leliana our spy master? To be honest with you, she's just a better spy master. The truly great ones can keep their distance. They don't get attached to their people. Me, I always wind up babysitting my informants and worrying about their families. We're in better hands with her. I like that because during Dragon Age 2, Varric specifically, there's certain moments throughout the story where it's revealed he's helping keeping people off like Meryl's back or helping doing these things in the shadows for his companions. And there were people commenting that it's like, oh, I don't think he actually does that. But I'm like, no, I think he actually does. That's a thing that I think is a truth. He does have a, a heart of gold underneath that rugged, handsome exterior, you know? He was helping people out. And it was great. Helping out Daisy. I'm surprised. Well, I mean, actually, I'm not surprised. But I wonder if he'll come up with uh, he'll mention any nicknames that he had for all of the uh, all of the characters from Dragon Age 2 at some point you're an author what kind of books have you written I've tried my hands at a few genres my crime serials are my most popular hard in high town guards breaking the rules to get things done the tale of the champion is the most famous thing I've written or infamous maybe I started a romance serial once, Swords and Shields, but to be honest, I don't have a knack for romances. Most of my stories end in tragedy. Probably that says something unfortunate about me personally. Hmm. I would say we could try our hands at a, at a romance vac, but it seems that you are committed to the crossbow. What shops do you own? What sort of shops do you own? Actually, we don't own shops. That was just an example. Mostly we invest in money lenders. Auction houses, a few mercenary companies, a couple of smithies. I think we own half a beet plantation in Ravain somewhere. Most of that's my brother's doing. Bartrand had business sense. Not much tact, but loads of business sense. How do you know Cassandra? How do you and Cassandra know each other? You heard about the Kirkwall Chantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The Seeker had questions about that, and I had answers. 
Yes, okay. The golden question. The story that he'll never tell, though. Where did you get that crossbow? I've never seen one like it. Bianca? She's one of a kind. I got her off a guy in Darktown. Took me a week to pry his dead fingers off the stock. N no. Alright, extravagant lie. Okay. Who is she named for? I can't tell you. And the reason for that is? Complicated. It's the one story I'll never tell. We just have to leave it at that. Alright. You did not pry it off someone in Darktown. That's all for now. Thanks, Varric. No problem. <laughs> Alright, that was good. There was some great stuff in there, because he's obviously our one proper link to Dragon Age 2 at the moment. We're like, what happened? Tell me! That's cool. I like that. Um, except for the fact that there was like one uh, instance of him disapproving to an in investigation question. I'd rather him not do that. What are these two people doing? Picking at snow in the same animation. What are you two doing? Suspicious behavior. Alright, uh, let's see. Who else can we speak to? There's a merchant up here. We can get that for you right away, sir. But I thought an army would want weapons more than beans. You can't eat a sword, boy. Beans. <gasps> That's what we need. Beans and bread, and I can keep everyone here fat and happy for as long as it takes. Get me the beans, sire. They need it immediately. Thren. If you're here to clean, Hess can get you a bucket and a broom. Anyone calls you knife here, come to me. Oh, you're her. Thren. Inquisition Quartermaster. I'm doing what I can to supply this mess. If you find what I need to fill one of my requisitions, I'd appreciate you bringing it in. Okay, nice. What do you do here? I make sure the Inquisition troops have food in their bellies and iron in their hands. Both are important. Lots of people expecting us to be heroes, marching all day to fight the demons. Turns out heroes need to dig latrines just like everyone else. How does someone end up as quartermaster for the Inquisition? I served for Eldon under Ten Logan McTeer, best commanding officer this world has ever seen. After they all turned on him at Denerim, though, there wasn't much use for people who held that opinion. Queen Honora offered my services to the Inquisition. It was a kindness. She knew I supported her father and got me away from the political garbage. Someone's in the background going, Thren, can't talk about Logan. Don't talk about him. <laughs> we've got a Logan supporter. I kind of like that, though, that we've got these characters that are still in this world. Uh, there's been so many different political things that have gone on over the years in this game that it's cool to have characters come out that was like, I was on this guy's side or I was here when this happened. And it's, it's I like that the events of the previous games matter in that sense even when it boils down to like minimal character interactions. Like it's it's just nice to have like characters that you've just met have a have a history uh, all of a sudden. And we know what they're talking about, which is really nice. I love that it's like, no wonder you're unpopular. And Lugain is a traitor. You didn't witness what he did at Ostagar. He turned his heels and ran with his tail between his legs when the sig when the beacons of Gondor were lit. Thren? Logain McTeer betrayed the Grey Wardens and his king. Were you there at Ostagar? I was. King Caelan overextended his position, and the Grey Wardens were too late lighting the signal. Following the original plan would have gotten everyone killed. Turn Logain made the right decision. I, I apologize. Sister Liliana told me I shouldn't talk about this. Just forget it. Liliana's at the top of that roof going, Stop! Okay, she was at Ostagar. I'll eat my hat, that's fine. Except I was there too in the cutscene. I watched what happened. <laughs> he was never going to help out, even if the Grey Wardens were early in lighting that signal. What did you mean when you mentioned requisitions? 
I'm making this Inquisition run with what we have, but we're not a real army. We're stretched thin on materials, so I've put up a requisition list for anything that could help our people. Here, take a look. You find some iron and a good logging site, maybe Harriet can get our troops better weapons. I've definitely got iron, that's for sure. If I have material for a special order, do I bring it to you? Just take it over there. One of my boys will take the materials or jot down what you found. Farewell. Make a go with you. Nice. Logging stand, okay. All, like, even just this character is so well designed, right? Like, how cool is this, uh, how cool is this outfit? With the little feather on the hat and everything, uh, I'm really enjoying the the updated appearances for for characters. I think they'll close that huge hole in the sky. Ally with the Templars, I'd imagine. I've seen them weaken magic. What about the rebel mages? Rebel mages probably made that damn breach. <laughs> we got the bucket hats over here. Yeah, I'm liking the new the new armor and new appearances that we're seeing because I think in Dragon Age Two there was a lot of sort of similar like outfits and and stuff like that everything was quite simplified so i'm liking the details all right i need a logging stand find anything we need let me know um also i think that there's probably a significant amount of things to loot around here so i'll probably end up doing like yeah there's a lot i'll probably end up doing an off-screen looting session at this point because no one wants to watch me run around and put my hands in bags so <laughs> I'll make sure to check all of the loot. All right, we'll see how we go, because there is a lot of it. History. A study of the Fifth Blight, Volume 1. While some of my contemporaries dispute whether the Fifth Blight was a true blight or merely a large darkspawn resurgence, despite the fact that there was a, an actual archdemon flying around, why would this be a point of contention? Uh, historians agree that it began in the swamps of the Korkari Wilds on the southeastern border of Ferelden in the 30th year of the Dragon Age. King Caelan Theron was swift in responding to the threat, gathering the royal army, every Grey Warden in his country, and sending a call for aid to the Ferelden nobility. The assembled armies laid a trap in the ruins of Ostagar, hoping to crush the force before it reached civilization. But they failed. Darkspawn overran the defenders of Ostagar and decimated the king and his army. They continued their advance into Ferelden unopposed. Only two Grey Wardens managed to escape the slaughter, and somehow they came into possession of ancient treaties, which compelled the races of men to join arms against the massing horde. The surviving Wardens made their way to Kinloch Hold, home of the Ferelden Circle, and conscripted the mages. In desperation to find more allies, the Wardens journeyed into the Brasilian Forest, seeking the Dalish. The Elves, too, joined the growing army. Into the deep roads, the surviving Wardens went, searching for Paragon Branca in hopes she could settle the unrest in Orzammar and unite the Dwarves in the battle against the Archdemon. Branca could not be located, but another Paragon was found, the legendary Caradin, who forged a crown that ended all question of succession. Balin Ejukin was crowned King of Orzammar, and the Dwarven armies marched for the surface, and despite their successes, though, greater challenges were yet to come. Study of the Fifth Blight. Nice. It's good to see something like this because this gives us some confirmation that our choices in the Dragon Age Keep have obviously gone through successfully to see what our choices were. There you go. Nice. What is this? Andraste's Mabari. You know Andraste's old Mabari. You don't show up in the chant. And if you ask those holy sisters, well, they'll say Andraste can't have some big old smelly war dog. But all Ferelda knows it right. Our sweet lady needed someone who would warm her feet at night. And there's Andraste's Mabari by the holy prophet's side. In the fight against Tevinter, that dog would never hide. They say the maker sent him special, always loyal, without pride, so he could be the sworn companion of the maker's holy bride. Oh, that dog, he guards Andraste without arrogance or fear, only asking of his mistress just a scratch behind the ears. But then old Mathrath gets to plotting, tries to lure that dog away. But even as they trap the prophet, Hermabari never strays. And there's holy, uh, so, and there's Andraste's Mabari by the holy prophet's side. In the fight against Tevinter, that dog would never hide. They say the Maker sent him special, always loyal, without pride, so he could be the sworn companion of the Maker's Holy Bride. 
Oh, they thought the wounds had killed him, but then he limped out toward the fire, and Hasarian, he shed a tear as that dog laid on the pyre. And there's Andraste's Mabari by the Holy Prophet's side. In the fight against Tevinta, that dog would never hide. They say the Maker sent him special, always loyal, without pride, so he could be the sworn companion of the Maker's Holy Bride. Yes, that Mabari's the companion of the Maker's Holy Bride. A popular, if historically unlikely, for Elden Tavern song. Okay, that's nice. We've got some things that we can read around the place, which we'll, we'll try and find. At the very least, this game highlights it in a very obvious way. You can see little parchments of paper. Patient Observations Day 3. Less thrashing, some response to stimulus, vital seems solid. Two attempts so far by locals to break into the Chantry to kill my patient. All this work to save her life, and will they just execute her? We'll inform Lady Cassandra I expect her to wake before the morn. Okay, my patient observations are in a different room than when I woke up in. All of my private medical information is just lying about the place. Who else is new? We've got the war room and oh yeah, that's the no I no know thy enemy. We've got the apo apothecary and solace and a blacksmith and a couple of merchants. Well, let's go check out the merchants. And we'll chat to that solace fella. I spoke with Commander Cullen. I uh Ooh. apologize for what I said earlier. It's nothing. Now, Scalpelaine, what can you tell me of Redcliffe? The mages have been quiet since their attack on the Conclave. Their attack? Do you have information confirming that the mages were responsible? Well, I had assumed. Don't. Our job is to acquire actionable information. Assumptions can lead you to overlook something vital. Commander Cullen. All right. Uh, special deliveries or something, what it said on the map, I think. Special shipments. Oh, that was this. We already engaged with that. That's fine. I'm wearing my special shipment. How could that great breach not have been caused by the mages? It is reasonable to believe that magic was involved, but we cannot assume it was the rebels. How many powerful mages died at the Conclave Scout Palane? How would those deaths benefit the rebels? I... I'm, I'm not sure. Good. Now you're thinking. That's a start. What's your name, anyway? You may call me Charter, Scout Belaine. Now lower your voice. Your report is not for the world at large. I almost kissed right in front of me. I like that this does a Dragon Age Origins type thing as well as when you're listening to people's conversations, is your character is just like engaged and actually looking at them. It was so much more obvious when it was my dwarf from Dragon Age Origins because he was so much shorter, so he'd just be like, What are they talking about up there? <laughs> we'll need some of your cloth for bandages. And how much is Mother Giselle willing to offer? Can you really put a price on the love of Andraste? <laughs> Segret. Good day. Or good as it could be with the sky ripped apart. What kind of person stays to run a shop at a time like this? The kind with nowhere else to go. Those blasted demons destroyed most of my goods. If I stay here, work some contacts, I can start rebuilding. Maybe, just maybe, help you folks out in the process. You must speak with most everyone here. How are people doing? Hope and fear in equal measure. No one really knows what it means when an inquisition is called. Yet, I imagine it's no better for you. You've got my sympathies for what it's worth. Okay. Can I see what you have for sale? Of course. My wares are at the table. Wares are at the table. Okay, you interact with the table. Well, I've got some stuff I could probably sell, but I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. I'm assuming this means they have an infinite amount of this item in stock. Get a bunch. A little adventurer hat. Oven kale. I probably won't sell, I probably won't buy anything yet. 
Sturdy Bianca grip and Bianca arms. I wonder who that's for. Um, cool. So this is like the you can have upgrades on your on your stuff. If I pick yes, um, well, I'll probably buy these. They seem pretty cheap, and we've got money. You can also buy the schematics for them and make them yourself instead of buying them, it looks like. Alright, um... I'm assuming this is our junk. Yeah, valuables. There you go. So that's the figurine that we bought, and I thought that was going to be, like, an important item. It's just junk. So we can sell our valuables. Oh, this is weird. Ooh, this is weird. I can see this armor on other characters. Wait, that's so weird. Does that mean I can get him to... Hang on. Oh no, this is like... It's like a sexy man version. <laughs> Guys, we can see Varric's chiseled abs. He's got an eight pack. God damn. Varric's ripped underneath that uh, coat of his. I didn't know that you could see this armor on other characters. Because Dragon Age 2 is, um, obviously they have their own set armor and then they get upgrades. I'm assuming this means that they've changed it back again and your companions can have gone back to getting armor. Guys, it's the Arashok Varric. How weird is that? Oh, it's so weird to see. Hang on, I need to see this. Solar Snipples. This is so strange. That's funny. Everyone's shredded. Cassandra, can I, um, just for... <laughs> just for research purposes. Oh my god. That's got me acting unwise. Okay. Ooh! Arashot Cassandra, though. Everybody, can you focus, please? Jesus Christ. Okay, that's cool. That's awesome. I love that. All right, I will focus on what to sell next time. I'm suddenly really distracted. Oh my god. Um, let's have, let's go down the road to the blacksmith. I think I have to wait. Wait a minute. How do I get to you? How do I get to the? Where are you? Let me just sprint around here. How do I get to... Oh, through here? Oh, look at them all fighting. Look at them all doing stuff. That dude's just walking through a sparring session. You're gonna get slain, sir. Oh my god, without a care in the world. You're gonna catch a stray blade. Oh, oh! Wow. He was He's playing with fire. A man without a care in the world. He's like, you know what? I don't care if I get my my head cut off because I don't even want to be here. The lights in the shadow, in their blood, the maker's will is written. All right, mate. Oh well, there's the logging site. Apparently, I can see that now. All right, to the blacksmith. We'll focus up. We won't run away too far. If the Inquisition wants to field a decent cavalry, it needs better horses. I heard Seeker Pentagast might try to acquire suitable mounts from Master Dennett in the Hinterlands. Oh, and who are you to be fishing around for what the higher-ups are doing? Back in Angsburg, my uncle was Fifth Praetor. And what's that mean for you back in Arnsberg? Honestly, about as much as it does here. Well, any horse is better than no horse, guys. Oh, um, you and your men might be working up a thirst. She sent me over to see if you needed anything. We're fine, thank you. <laughs> We're fine, thank you. Turns around and leaves. Classic Bioware exit. Um, where's our uh, where's our blacksmith from uh, from Dragon Age Origins? Come on, guys, bring him back. Expected you'd be by. I'm Harrit, and everyone knows who you are. How's the new gear fit? Sturdy and warm. It's perfect. Good. The world's gone mad. 
Stock armor and blades are good against bandits, but we're not fighting bandits. My gear will see you through demons, apostates, whatever this world throws at you. So, you need custom work, something special. You bring the materials to us, we'll make it happen. Okay. What can you and your team make here? Arms and armor. We work iron to blighted dragon bone, if you've got it. Our designs are simple, but they get the job done. You want something fancy, bring your own design. We'll see what we can do. How did you come to be here? Come from a little town called Lothring. Long gone now. I was in Redcliffe when the Darkspawn hit it during the Blight. Helped rebuild. Left when Royalty decided it was time to hand the place over to the bloody mages. Ended up here. Just missed the boom. Can't decide if I'm the luckiest son of a bitch walking or the exact opposite. <laughs> You're still walking. That's always good. True enough. Who outfits the Inquisition soldiers? Not me. I've got work to do. Can't be passing a sword to every blighter who signs up. If you want to help the troops, talk to Thren, the Quartermaster. She'll set up requisitions. Does the Inquisition not have supplies to make armor or weapons? Tough convincing traders to haul up here. Impossible to get them to risk the rare stuff, so that's on you. Can you help improve my arms and armor? Yes. You find a new piece, a pauldron or greaves, we'll take care of you. You can't just slap a new hilt on your sword in the field. Bring it here, we'll make sure it's done right and proper. If I want something, what can you make? Start simple. Something to keep you safe. Take a look at it on the table there and we can talk. You'll need materials. We should have what you want just outside. Goodbye. Right. Right. Study of the Fifth Blight, Volume 2. Damn. So you're, we're getting codex entries by engaging in optional dialogue with people as well. So, gotta talk to everyone. Oh god, I can just randomly attack. <laughs> She's gotten loose! Quickly, get her! <laughs> Everyone's suspicious of me. I can't go randomly attacking play people. Uh, crafting. All weapons, nothing is available because I have only got something for crafting armor, I think. Oh, I can see my helmet when we're in the crafting section. Upgrading an item adds the upgrade stats to an item stats. For example, attaching a hilt with a plus three cunning bonus to a sword adds the bonus to the sword. Amazing. You can freely add and exchange stuff, which is good. Okay. Um. I need to get this out of my inventory, otherwise I'm, I'm going to get nothing done. Um, light legs, sigil, light arms. Eee, okay, I see, I see. Let's see what's going on here. The so apprentice arm is the only one I can change at the moment, and you can. Okay, we'll investigate this. Oh well, he just gave me better apprentice armor than my than, than the, my dragon gear that I'm running around with. So that's funny. All right, fine. Uh, confirm. All right, lovely. I don't like the look of it though. I don't like the look of it though. Oh god. I need to stop randomly attacking. I, I'm left clicking instead of right clicking. <laughs> Oh god, you can just craft like the nor like a standard version of this stuff as well. That's cool. The Avar armor is so weird. Cool though. Another time then. Alright, Arrett. I'm taking a look around. Ah, nice. An apprentice staff. I can buy and sell. The tactician's renewal. Why is there a Oh, it's a single use. We get a free one for like what? Well, not a free one, but a cheap one. This single use amulet lets the bearer clear her mind and reapply the benefits of combat knowledge for maximum tactical uh, flexibility. Crafted by Formari Tranquil, who, despite recent events, remain open to commissions by the influential, although at increasing rarity and cost. 
Okay, so we can get one for cheap. That's nice. Um, so I can craft an apprentice staff. Let's take a look. Stop. Um, each crafting schematic has one or more slots. Each slot accepts a specific number of materials of either metal cloth or leather. There are five different types of crafting slots. Utility, offense, defense, damage, and armor. This type of slot determines the stat that will be generated from the material placed in it. Placing iron in a defense slot gives a bonus to melee defense, while putting it in utility gives a bonus to strength. This is cool. There's, uh, there's some nice levels to crafting here. Each crafting material has a predetermined stat value for each possible slot type, which you can view by examining the material. And it's determined by multiplying this value by the number of materials placed in the slot. Okay. So you can do either electricity or cold damage. And you can see the slots that they go into. Well, you'd probably want just one plus strength. But putting strength on a staff seems to be redundant as a mage character. Uh, willpower is good. Actually, hang on. Which slot is this? This is the damage and this is the utility. So this will give us plus one attack. Plus one chance to stay outside of the camp. Okay, and this will give us plus one willpower. So that'll give us a 32 DPS staff, 20 electricity damage with six plus six willpower. I have crafted a... Oh, and it changes the name. It's a resolute staff and you can rename it too. Okay, you can name your weapons. I like that. Right. Craft, craft your own weapons and then name them. So you can have a personal attachment to that. I like that. Um, and then you can add grip staff blades and runes to it. Okay. Cool. Plus six willpower, I think, is the reason why I'm going to increase this staff over 6% barrier damage. So I'm going to equip that. God, it looks like I can whack people over the head with it, though. Like, it's a mace of a staff. Look at that. Here we go, we've learned some things with crafting, and we've got A Study of the Fifth Blight, Volume 2. So this is a recount on Dragon Age Origins. I'm assuming we'll get a recount of Dragon Age 2 then, as well, at some point. The Warden sought Arl Eamon, uncle of the late King Caelan, in the hopes of mustering troops from the Ferelden nobility. Upon arriving in Redcliffe, they learned that the Arl had fallen ill and was near death. His knights had gone in pursuit of the fabled Ashes of Andraste, Eamon's only hope for a cure, and the village surrounding the keep was beset by a host of animated corpses. The wardens found and stopped the demon behind the undead before joining the search for Eamon's cure. No one is certain if the wardens actually located the final resting place of Our Lady Andraste, but whatever they found saved the Isle of Redcliffe. On his recovery, Eamon Guerin called for a landsmeet, and he and the wardens travelled to Denerim. The gathered lords and ladies of Ferelden found Taren Loghain guilty of a number of crimes and sentenced him to execution. Furthermore, the landsmeet granted the vacant throne to Enora, widow of King Caelan. The nobility then pledged their own armies in the battle against the Blight. The archdemon clashed with the allied forces at the city of Denerim and was eventually slain, but at terrible cost. Much of the city lay in ruin. The warden who rallied the armies was named the Hero of Ferelden and accorded the highest honour. The Fifth Blight ended before most of Thedas knew it had begun, but it had left a terrible wound on Ferelden. The losses suffered at Ostagar and Denerim greatly compromised the security of the kingdom. Southern Ferelden from the Korkari Wilds to the edge of the Benorn are, to this day, a wasteland. It's uncertain how far the ripples from this event shall travel or what waves it has already stirred. Nice. Again, getting some confirmation on choices that were made, like Terran Lugain's execution. He's not randomly going to show up with a <laughs> with as a head in the jar or something. Pickled Terran Lugain head. He's like, hello, I survived. All right, let's head back into town and talk to Solas. Go past the T-posing dummies. An Antivan bleeder, okay. A dagger, gotcha. 
excuse me, excuse me there. I'm oh, just coming through. See reason, listen. We cannot stay here. Why not? Because we're Templars. What does that even mean anymore? That we splinter and fight amongst ourselves instead of protecting the mages? Better that than stay here with this Inquisition. You're awfully quick to dismiss the people who saved your life, Matrin. Okay, let's set. Yes. Yes. I'd like your take on the Templar Order. It's a shadow of what it was. Where once we both protected all people from the dangers of magic, we now posture and grab at power. One day, I hope the circles are again sanctuaries where mages can practice their craft. It's interesting to have Templars here. I mean, one of them is trying to leave. You're not going to rejoin the Order? When the temple went up, your forces rescued those few of us still alive. My life is a debt I intend to repay, however I can. Do you have any idea what caused the explosion? No, I'm just a recruit. Belief and faith doesn't get you closer to the important meetings. Though that distance did save my life. Okay. Uh, interesting. I will talk to you later. Walk in the Maker's grace. I will talk to you later. Um, so we do have some NPCs that are not marked on the map to talk to. I see some iron. Oh god, I see a lot of it. Oh no. <laughs> Guys, where's my, uh, where are my automatic mining drills? So I don't have to manually pick this stuff up. Can I recruit people to go out into the field and pick up all these herbs for me? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unmarked NPCs in the field is interesting. I want to talk to everybody. I got to look around. Fix the door just like you asked, Flitter. Do you know what it was? It could be a trouble. I don't know. Master Harriet said I should go back right away. Lipsting the eye of the empire of the Orleans. Empress of fire, what season may come? We we'll fight for the day you restore our heart and bring us to glory. We Ventriloquist um, bard over here. They know how to sing with their mouth closed. They're not even, it's like they're barely even playing the instrument. So, under certain lighting conditions, uh, I've got the milk lip problem, unfortunately. <laughs> so, we can collect songs, which is cool. A tale of the Frostbacks. Even mountains had a heart once. When the world was young, Korth the Mountain Father kept his throne at the peak of Bellinus, the mountain at the center of the world, from which he could see all the corners of earth and sky. And he saw strong men become weak, brave men grow cowardly, and wise men turn foolish for love. Korth devised a plan that he might never be betrayed by his own heart, by taking it out and hiding it where no soul would ever dare to search for it. He sealed it inside a golden cask, buried it in the earth, and raised around it the fiercest mountains the world had ever seen, the Frostbacks, to guard it. But without his heart, the mountain father grew cruel. His chest was filled with bitter mountain winds that shrieked and howled like lost souls. Food lost its flavor, music had no sweetness, and he lost all joy in deeds of valor. He sent avalanches and earthquakes to torment the tribes of men. Gods and men rose against him, calling him a tyrant. But with no heart, Korth could not be slain. Soon there were no heroes left, either among men or gods, who would dare challenge Korth. The Lady of the Skies sent the best of her children, the swiftest, the cleverest, the strongest flyers, to scour the mountains for the missing heart. And for a year and a day they searched. But Sparrow and Raven, Vulture and Eagle, Swift and Albatross returned to her with nothing. Then the, then the Tarmagen spoke up and offered to find the God Chief's heart. The other birds laughed, for the Tarmagen is a tiny bird, too humble to soar, which spends half its time hopping along the ground. The lady would not give the little creature her blessing, for the mountains were too fierce even for eagles. But the Tarmagen sent out anyway. 
the little birds traveled deep into the frostbacks. When she could not fly, she crawled. She hugged the ground and weathered the worst mountain winds, and so made her lonely way to the valley where the heart beat. With all the god's terrible deeds, the heart was far too heavy for the tiny bird to carry, so she rolled it, little by little, out of the valley and down a cliff, and when the golden cask struck the earth, it shattered. The heart was full, almost to bursting, and the pain of it roused the mountain god to come see what had happened. When Korth neared his heart, it leapt back into his chest, and he was whole again. Then Hakon Winter's Breath bound Korth's chest with three bands of iron and three bands of ice, so it could never escape again. And all the remaining gods named the Tamajan honored above even the loftiest eagles. Okay. Cool. Resources found here. Elfruit and iron. And then the Tamajan found the the casket with the heart in it and said, I've got a jar of dirt. Have you seen otherwise? It's just what I heard. It's just what I heard. Can I get you anything? <laughs> this camera zoom in is so funny. Because sometimes it just... Yes, let's focus on the barrel of ale. What can you tell me about this area? Adan is Haven's apothecary. Goddamn milk lip. He's making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Harrit is the Inquisition's smith. Whatever he can make you, Thren the Quartermaster can probably find. And for anything fancier, you can try buying from Segrit. His prices aren't too high. Yet. Oh, there's also my knave. She studies beasts and things, as I understand. As I understand. Farewell. Goodbye. Okay. Have you heard about the refugees out in the hinterlands, near Redcliffe? Hard going. The mages and the Templars put a lot of people out of their homes. At least Mother Giselle is there to help. I'd think food and clothing would help more than prayers. Is there codex entries to be unlocked by listening to roaming dialogue? Because if so... Oh, that's insane. We're going to miss so many. Oh, no, it's another song. It's another song that I'm hearing in the background. Okay. I thought that came from listening to those people just then. Frat, um, hang on. Where's that song coming from? Inside the tavern? Oh, she just plays different songs, okay. Hailwell. What's actually kind of nice is I think the bard singing is the only sound to continue when you pause the game, which is kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Hello, Solus. What are you pondering? God, isn't it cold? Put some shoes on. He looks like he's so cold. Get a beanie for this bold man. The Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. Okay. Um, <laughs> sounds dashing. I've no interest in being a hero. All I want is to find a way to seal this breach. Pragmatic, but ultimately irrelevant. Okay. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. Okay, so he's brooding. He's another brooding elf. We don't have Fenris anymore, so we need another brooding elf to replace him. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. Okay. What makes you so special? You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. 
and if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study, for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay there. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate mage, surrounded by Chantry forces, and unlike you, I do not have a divine mark protecting me. Cassandra has been accommodating, but you understand my caution. So he's a he's a dream archaeologist. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, we've been hit with our first flirtation moment. Why can't I do that with Varric? I'd be like, hey man, Bianca's one story you'll never tell, <laughs> but I could be another. God damn it. Um, I don't know, man. Bold men just aren't my type. <laughs> um, so far, the Dragon Age routine has been to flirt with everyone for fun, and then we accidentally uh, make out with someone when we didn't want to, and then we ghost them. Um, unfortunately. No, Anders! Don't kiss me! <laughs> I just... <laughs> it's... It's... Uh, hmm. Why are we in romances? I, I always struggle. Um, your fears don't matter. Well, I don't like any of these options, which means I've been shoehorned into saying that you can trust me. I don't, I mean it in a friendly way. You can trust me as a, as a brother. Um, that's right, a brother. You heard me. Um, these two suck. This is a maybe, but all right, fuck it. You came here to help Solus. I won't let them use that against you. How would you stop them? However I had to. Thank you. As a friend. And now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Ah, he jumped. Okay. His, um, so he took off his, uh, mage robes, but he's still got this, uh, thing around his neck, and it looks important. I want to ask him about it, because it looks like it's like a part of a jaw... Out of a jaw of a creature or an animal of some variety. Closing the breach is our primary goal, but I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the conclave proves that much. Yeah, it's a, a jaw of uh, something. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. God, this man's easy. I'm getting his approval left, right, and center. You're telling me that you're easy, Solus? God damn. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? It must be like just mages being friends with mages immediately, so he just automatically approves of me. <laughs> Tell me about elves. I'm certainly not one. I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. I thought you'd be more interested in sharing your opinions of elven culture. You are Dalish, are you not? Interesting. Yes, because Solus doesn't, he's not Dalish, he's not affiliated with any groups, he's just a random elf, apparently. Which I think is a first, I don't think we've encountered that before. Why are you so angry? I am a true elf and proudly, okay. We're about to get into an elven debate. Because he's, yeah, I wonder what his opinions are. Am I proudly a Dalish elf? This one, I don't like because all elves are true elves. Why are you so angry? What's your problem with the Dalish? Allergic to Hala? 
They are children acting out stories misheard and repeated wrongly a thousand times. Oh, but you know the truth, right? While they pass on stories, mangling details, I walk the fade. I have seen things they have not. Okay. Interesting. She's like, you guys don't know anything. I'm smarter than you. You see this mega mind? The Dalish are trying to restore elven history. If you know something new, share it. Would your clan listen to what I had learned in my studies? My travels? Or would they mock the flat ear and his stories and go back to their ruins? At least you were asking. But here's something. I will answer as I can. Okay. He didn't like that I called him easy. Now he's disapproving. <laughs> Is the magic they teach in the circle different from the magic I learned with my people? No and yes. Magic is magic, just as water is water, but it can be used in different ways. Dalish magic is more practical, not needing Chantry approval, although they still thrive on blood magic. Superstition. Much of it is more subtle. A legacy from when elves were immortal. Hmm. When we were special. Oh, hang on. Was immortality due to magic and about blood magic? Okay. The legends of elven immortality. Did they use magic to increase their lifespan? No. It was simply part of being elven. The subtle beauty of their magic was the effect, not the cause of their nature. Some spells took years to cast. Echoes would linger for centuries, harmonizing with new magic and in an ending symphony. It must have been beautiful. Oh, okay. Poetry man. You said that the censure against blood magic was a superstition. I did. It's fortunate Cassandra is not within earshot. Most modern cultures forbid blood magic. Publicly, even Devinda disapproves of it. But as I said, magic is magic. It matters only in how it is used. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, Solus, I don't mind blood magic. Blood magic seems interesting. Blood magic is evil. This is great because we get to be a new character. Now, what's what's funny is, um, I don't know, man. Blood magic is a hot, sexy debate, isn't it? Uh, Dragon Age Origins, there were instances of it, of it coming up and we just kind of, for a safety net, opposed it. And then in Dragon Age 2, we also opposed it specifically when it was in ridiculously dangerous situations like with Meryl. And then Kirkwall was just infested with it. It was crazy. I think Dragon Age Origins, whenever you see blood magic come up, it was during the the circles sort of um, trouble when the, the, the temple was being, you know, the circle of Magi was being desecrated by demons we also saw a bunch of mages using blood magic so it definitely paints a, a picture for you very early on that it's like blood magic bad and then it what we've been seeing over the course of the games in dragon age 2 and then what solace is saying to us now is they're trying to like shift the perspective on blood magic a little bit where it's like yeah it's only how it's used like i do believe that there is some sort of blood magic that can't be used for good and some of it that's very questionable. I'm still on the more of it being questionable because when you're putting people's lives at risk or not thinking about people around you when you're engaging in blood magic, that's what I disapprove of. Uh, like with Meryl's use of it, I think that was very reckless and dangerous. But then there's situations where blood magic can be used where it's not particularly damaging to a, a massive group of people around you. A little bit of blood magic is a treat, <laughs> but it's it's interesting. The games over time have been like pushing me away from strongly disapproving to more slightly disapproving. I wonder if how this game is going to make me think about blood magic because each game has had a different sort of perspective and a, and a different take on it. Um, and what's interesting about this is we can go with straight up blood magic is evil and it seems interesting or I don't mind blood magic. And I, it's funny as I, I sit here and look at these and I'm like, 
I'm not sure which one to choose. I think I might go for how it seems interesting. Slightly disapproving. <laughs> this is the, I guess this is the fun part about having a new character as well, because we get to have a different uh, perspective or different opinions on certain things. Um, you know, Mapo Broska and Mapo Hawk had their encounters with blood magic, and now Mapo Lass gets to form, tell her own story about blood magic. I'd be interested in learning more about blood magic. I would teach you if I knew it. Unfortunately, using blood magic seems to make it more difficult to enter the Fade. You understand why I never bothered to learn it. A shame, as it is extremely powerful. Provided it remains a tool, not a crutch, nor a passion. Not a passion, like Meryl. <laughs> That's interesting. It lessens your ability to traverse the Fade, apparently. I'd like to know more about the elves from before our time. The Dalish strive to remember Halam Shiral. But Halam Shiral was merely a fumbling attempt to recreate a forgotten land. Arlathan. Alvanan was the empire. And Arlathan, its greatest city. A place of magic and beauty, lost to time. You've studied ancient elves. What else do you know of Arlathan? We hear stories of them living in trees and imagine wooden ramps or Dalish aravels. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. Imagine beings who lived forever, or whom magic was as natural as breathing. That is what was lost. I wish I could see that, because that, like, just the image of that is beautiful. And something that I'm actually really happy with right now is while I was tempted to make a Canari, because the game goes, oh, you can be a Canari now, and I was very, very into that, um, the, the main reasons that we're going with being an elf is because for these past two games, I've been like, wow, elven lore is amazing. I want to dive into it more. You couldn't be an elf in Dragon Age 2. So I'm like, all right, the third game, uh, if it's a new character, will be an elf. You know, that was kind of the promise because... I want to know more like the the elven lore is I think my favorite part about the Dragon Age world. Every time I'm reading stories about it I'm like this is incredible. This is amazing stuff. It's great. And then with the Canari, I also think it's really really interesting but at the same time I don't really understand it that well and I feel like I would be a terrible Canari player as a result. <laughs> so I was like I want to be an elf and it's great that we have this random dude who seems to be quite well versed in he's our elven lore guy so that's nice because i get to learn even more so i've very consistently been very passionate about the the elven lore uh so i i do really like this this pairing so we're gonna try and get as much elven lore as possible as a result <laughs> are all dalish elves like my clan no your clan was unique in having enough interest in human affairs to send you to spy upon the divine's meeting as your clans have been separate for so long, they have all changed, adapting to the lands in which they live. Some are no more than bandits, others trade freely with humans, and some have disappeared entirely into the forests. What can you tell me about elves living in human cities? The culture in alienages or among the slaves of Devinter is like any of the impoverished and powerless. They cling to memories of a better past and practice a few rituals to distinguish themselves from humans. He just loves us talking to him. Every time we just ask him a question, he's like, I approve. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Until I, oh God, until I tell him about my, uh, that I like, uh, that he's angry. Then he's like, I hate the Dalish. They suck. What can I do for you? Um, I would like to continue talking to you, please. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your mark allows you to exert some control over the Breach. That means it was created deliberately. Are you sure about that, though? Could just be an accident. Happy accident. 
I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality. Where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful. And the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. <laughs> well, I know we're going to have the most approval with at the moment. I don't need a meter to tell this. Every time I'm just like, hey, can you tell me about this? He's like, sure, I like you. <laughs> we were asked so much of Varric, and all we got was disapproval when we told him that... Uh, Goddamn. Oh my god, what's his name? Why did I just forget his name all of a sudden? Um, Orson Welles, you know, that guy. Pile of corpses, man. Orsino, there it is. I'd like to know more about demons. <sighs> How dare you not approve of my question? They take the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations and in so doing do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon? Is that wish gone wrong? <laughs> I don't care. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them? If not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one. And it matters that you thought to ask. I didn't realize that was going to be the question that I asked, but sure. <laughs> We'll talk later. Goodbye. I wish to know about you now. We have one more, sir, please, if you may. What can I do for you? Tell me about yourself. I'd like to know more about you, Solus. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I must know I can trust you. Do I need a reason I respect you? All right. Well, at the moment, I'm trying to appeal to you. I'm buttering you up so I can know more about elven lore. So, um... Yeah, it's because I respect that mega mind of yours. You're an apostate, yet you risked your freedom to help the Inquisition. Not the wisest course of action when framed that way. I appreciate the work you're doing, Solus. I just wanted to know more about you. I'm sorry. With so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. I treasured my dreams. Being awake out of the Fade became troublesome. Oopsie, we've got a man who's got an obsession with the Fade. <laughs> We're talking about the, he's talking about the dangers of like, uh, the passion surrounding blood ma magic when it's good as a tool but not as a passion but then I'm like sir I think you have an obsession with dreams this will probably be slightly disapproving but I would like to know what he has to say about it did spirits try to tempt you no more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits and how to interact safely with the rest I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. Clearly you woke up. What's the, what's that word? Where people can like, um, God, I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's like that terminology where apparently people like go to sleep and they can like control their dreams or like walk about them willingly. It's like the, the word is in my brain somewhere. It's on the tip of my tongue. You guys should probably know what I'm talking about. Um, some form of like controlled dreaming. And it seems that in Dragon Age, he's uh, he's learned how to do that. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imaginations. To find interesting areas, 
but one must be interesting. Lucid. Lucid dreaming, I think is what it's called. Lucid dreaming. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroy the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the fade. <laughs> True. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I've enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the fade. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable side benefit. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. <laughs> oh, yeah. You like my side benefits. See, sometimes I like to flirt for fun, but then it gets me in trouble. And there's the thing. I haven't met other people in the world yet. I've got to explore. I've got to be a free spirit solace. I can't flirt with the first elf I see. What if there's someone else that I like later? You know? You said you'd traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. Interesting. He's just... he was able to see it? I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real. It is the Fade. They are all real. Okay. Huh? Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. Okay, so you, you made friends with spirits. Have you made friends with anyone that's real? I know that spirits are also real, but I mean, tangible, physical people. Have you ever had a girlfriend, Solas? I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. Ha. Huh. Demons. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The Fade reflects the minds of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. Wow. That is an interesting perspective. Because Meryl's demon manifested to be a pride demon. But was that because we expected it to be one? If that is true. Was it one of wisdom? That's kind of a really interesting take. Did it become, was it a, did it manifest as a pride demon before, because the keeper expected it to be one and therefore it became one. That, that's, there's muddied waters there. That's a, that's a gray area. That's an interesting line of thinking. Demons and spirits potentially being one in the same, because you can see how justice in Dragon Age 2 was corrupted, maybe due to the his connection with Anders, and it became more of like it became vengeance. Became something different. Hmm. You trust these spirits not to possess you the first time you accidentally make a wish. 
you trust your friends not to turn on you? Well, yes, but they're people. Ah, of course. You know what I mean. Are people only people because they are flesh and blood? Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? <laughs> Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? If I... <laughs> I'm not arguing this. Hmm. Ow. I'm engaging in this phil philosophical debate. It's getting me all hot. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna- I'll do this one. You have an interesting way of looking at the world, Solus. I try. And that isn't quite an answer. I look forward to helping you make new friends. That should be... well... That isn't quite an answer either. <laughs> <laughs> Little elf boy, you only make friends with spirits. How about you make friends with a real woman? We'll talk later. Goodbye. All right, that was a good conversation. <laughs> Goodbye. I've got to go and think about what we've just spoken about. That was a that was a good, sexy, ph philosophical debate right there. Is this Solus's house? Let's take a look around. There's nothing in here. Okay. That was great. All right. I liked that uh, encounter. There was a lot to learn there, a lot to think about too. That's cool. And we've just gained a million approval points. The Randy Dowager Quarterly, a well-worn quarterly missive of suspect virtue. The Randy Dowager welcomes the cool of autumn with the fall of another, the collected dreams of desire, being the confessions of an apprentice and training more farrowing than harrowing, forbidden dalliances at their most spirited. The Randy Dowager, exhibitions for the noble of thought but spry of step. The lady herself says, enchanting, one supports the circles if only because closed doors offer the imagination more. Three scarves fluttered in shock out of five. Ah, D. <laughs> Got another merchant in here. Oh, the apothecary. Find recipes through exploration or by visiting merchants. Visit an apoc apothecary with herbs and as you gather in the wilderness to upgrade potions. Use the equip station to assign different potions to each of your party members and to replenish the potions you are carrying. Use the upgrade station to unlock permanent upgrades to your potions. Okay, so it seems that this might be the... Okay. We can perhaps have more. Sacred asked, told me that he can't let the herbs go for anything less than eight. Fine. We'll gather our own. Tell Sacred he better hope he doesn't need a salve anytime soon. So much detail in these rooms and environments. I really like it. Miniature spinning wheel, an adventurer hat, and a belt of melee defense. Patient observations, day two. Why are all my patient observations in different places? I guess being in the apothecary would make sense. They're just passing around my personal medical information. Pulse normal, breathing normal, still unresponsive, careful drop feed of prep, elf root extract to hasten her recovery. A lot of thrashing, mutters about too many eyes, something about the gray. Encouraging? Hmm, okay. Hello there, sire. <laughs> Look who's back from the dead. Again. I don't recall meeting you before. I'd be surprised if you did. You weren't particularly coherent. Someone had to patch you up after you staggered out of making those wear, though. So, you're welcome. It has been a rough few days. <laughs> That's an understatement. And more ahead if the weather is any indication. Name's Adan. I'm in charge of keeping our little band here stocked with potions and elixirs. Not that Seeker Pentagast seems to care whether we've got the supplies to actually do that. <laughs> For a healer, you don't seem particularly nurturing. I'm not a healer. I'm an alchemist who's forced to play Mother Hen. You want something to burst into flame on contact with the air? Done. Gladly. Patching up wounded soldiers is a waste of my time and talents. But there are a few around who can help. How are your people holding up? There's no shortage of work. That's for damn sure. How do I go about having potions made? Just take a look there and tell me what you'd like. Find a recipe for something better, I can make that too. 
A regeneration potion recipe. I've acquired a new recipe. You're back. And in one piece. Is there anything I can do to help out? We're fine as far as raw labor goes. You've more important things to do than tend to me. I only wish I'd been able to find Master Tajan's notes. Old bastard was working on something special. He died at the Conclave, and his notes weren't here. Been too busy dealing with the wounded to look for them. Hmm. Huh? Farewell. Farewell. Alright. Potion assignment and replenishment. You can equip or replenish potions for each party member. Drag them from the list on the left to the slots at the bottom right to assign them to the current party member. You must replenish potions before you can use them. Healing potions are replenished for free automatically, but all other potions require herbs, okay? The type and number of herbs required appear next to the selected potions description. So a regeneration potion is slow health regen for one elf root. Okay. Yeah. So I can do that, and then I can do that. All right, cool. And then we've got one that's locked. Let Up me know if you need anything. Upgrade potions. You can upgrade potions you have already unlocked. Select a category, select a potion, select the upgrade. Potion upgrades require a significant amount of herbs to unlock. In return, they give permanent and significant bonuses. Grenades. Uh, okay, so instantly restores 385, which is what it is currently. A Dawn Lotus, okay, increases healing amount by 50 or 67. Okay, we can research that stuff. Regen potion, increase duration and increase healing. Life Ward. And heals nearby allies for the same amount, that's cool. Some good upgrades here. Tonics. Unknown. Grenades. Also unknown. Alright. Interesting. We'll come into that later, I suppose. Lovely. What else have we got around here? I think that's all of the people around here that we've seen. And we'll go and do Know Thy Enemy, which I think I left that alone. As I said, we'll do that after last episode, so we'll do that now. Or not? The people appearing out of nowhere. Does it trouble you? It didn't close the breach. Not anymore. Um, I don't know. Well, Cassandra's not going to know this. She's just going to say, I don't know, dude. If it wasn't enough to close the breach, what use is it? You did everything we asked of you. And it still didn't work. What's important is that your mark is now stable, as is the breach. You've given us time, and Solas believes a second attempt might succeed, provided the mark has more power. The same level of power used to open the breach in the first place. That is not easy to come by. Clearly, you have something in mind. We do. May I present Commander Cullen, leader of the Inquisition's forces. Such as they are, we lost many soldiers in the valley, and I fear many more before this is through. This is Lady Josephine Montelier, our ambassador and chief diplomat. Anderan Atishan. You speak Elven. You've just heard the entirety of it, I'm afraid. And of course, you know Sister Liliana. My position here involves a degree of... She is our spymaster. Yes. Tactfully put, Cassandra. <laughs> Damn, that's Cullen. Okay. Cullen did redeem himself in Dragon Age 2 a little bit towards the end. He was shitty in Dragon Age Origins, and then he is like, wait a minute. Meredith's crazy. <laughs> he realizes that towards the end. So I'm not opposed to his inclusion here. He did redeem himself a little bit. And uh, I love that she's like, I'll try and uh, greet you in, in Elvish. And that is all that I have learned so far in my Duolingo. Um, impressive titles. That's an impressive bunch of titles. 
I mentioned that your mark needs more power to close the breach for good. Which means we must approach the rebel mages for help. And I still disagree. The Templars could serve just as well. We need power, Commander. Enough magic poured into that mark. Might destroy us all. Templars could suppress the breach, weaken it, so... Pure speculation. I was a Templar. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. I'm terrible with um, names when they're first spoken, by the way. So I have literally already forgotten this person's name, and I only know everyone else's name because I've had such an exposure to them in previous games. <laughs> I've already forgotten her name. So we'll get there. I like the idea of her having like, she's taken the minutes of the of the meeting and it's got a candle for lighting. That's like, that's cool. I like that. Um, everything is so detailed, which I really appreciate. They still think I'm guilty. That is not the entirety of it any longer. Some are calling you, a Dalish elf, the Herald of Andraste. Mm. That frightens the Chantry. The remaining clerics have declared it blasphemy, and we heretics for harboring you. Chancellor Roderick's doing, no doubt. It limits our options. Approaching the mages or Templars for help is currently out of the question. I wonder how different this would be if I was just human, right? If I was human warrior or, you know, something like that. I wasn't a mage, so I wasn't an apostate. I'm kind of the worst thing to be right now. I'm... <laughs> I'm a mage, and I'm also not human, and being chosen as the Herald of Andraste, that's going to raise some questions in the in the eyes of many. But I wonder how differently this could be approached if I was uh, a human. It would probably just be the, obviously, the suspicious nature of my mark that would still put me in this position. I like her voice, though. Just how am I the Herald of Andraste? People saw what you did at the temple, how you stopped the breach from growing. They have also heard about the woman seen in the rift when we first found you. They believe that was Andraste. Even if we tried to stop that view from spreading. Which we have not. The point is, everyone is talking about you. It's quite the title, isn't it? How do you feel about that? There's tension between Leliana and Cassandra. You can tell that they have some, I think, some conflicting views on things. They're uh, making that quite uh, easy to spot. Cullen's got the uh, quite the appearance upgrade. He's looking quite fancy. How do I feel about it? Mm. It's a little unsettling. <laughs> I'm sure the Chantry would agree. People are desperate for a sign of hope. For some, you're that sign. And to others, a symbol of everything that's gone wrong. Will the Chantry attack us? With what? They have only words at their disposal. And yet, they may bury us with them. There is something you can do. A Chantry cleric by the name of Mother Giselle has asked to speak to you. Mm. She is not far and knows those involved far better than I. Her assistance could be invaluable. Okay. I'll see what she has to say. You will find Mother Giselle tending to the wounded in the hinterlands near Redcliffe. Look for other opportunities to expand the Inquisition's influence while you're there. We need agents to extend our reach beyond this valley, and you're better suited than anyone to recruit them. In the meantime, let's think of other options. I won't leave this all to the Herald. So that's, you're calling me that as well, huh? That's my official title. Operations. So I, I'm assuming that Leliana is not going to be in our party as a rogue. I would hope that she is. I'd love to have Leliana in our party again, but it seems she might be relegated to important character sitting around a table because we've got Cassandra, Varric, and Solus in, that we can actually look at at the moment in our character screen. But I'm, I'm hoping we could have Leliana make it come back. It seems her time may have passed, though, unfortunately. I'd love to see that change. We'll see. Operations. The War Table allows you to apply the power of the Inquisition throughout Orlais and Ferelden. Mother Giselle is in the Hinterlands, which can be found on the Ferelden side of the table. 
Ooh, so there's Olay and Ferelden as well, and we can see the free marches up with Kirkwall. That's cool. Orlay. Known for its culture of extravagant nobility, yet also as the birthplace of the Chantry, Orlay is the most powerful human nation in Thedas. What have your ears heard, Leliana? Oh God. Jeez. Anything Jesus. new we don't already know about? No. Nothing. Okay. Do you guys mind? Um, that's jump scared me. I wasn't expecting dialogue. Alright, well... Okay, so that's the breach. Thrilled. War table? The Inquisition can unlock new areas for you to explore through scouting operations. Perform the scouting operation for the Hinterlands on the Ferelden side of the war table now. Scout the Hinterlands. This is cool. Brazilian Forest. I like getting like a full look of the of the map here. That's cool. Scout the Hinterlands. Mother Giselle was last seen in the hinterlands outside Redcliffe, tending refugees who fled the fighting between renegade Templars and apostate mages. The latest reports suggest that the vicious struggle between the two groups has spread to the hinterlands, catching the refugees and Mother Giselle in the middle. It is vital to protect her and, if possible, restore order to the area. Oh, we've got forces, secrets, and connections. Look at this artwork on these as well. This is so cool. So you can, we can only use one of these, which is, if Giselle dies, any hope of the Chantry support dies with her. My scouts will slip past the fighting, find her, and protect her with their lives. That's cool that you can choose to do this scouting through connections, secrets, or forces. I like that. All right. Um, how do I select it? Do I just click on this? Okay, there you go. Scouting report. Scout the hinterlands. Uh, we avoided the fighting as best we could. It's every bit as bad as we'd feared. The apostates are mad, attacking anything that moves, and it appears that the Templars here aren't following anyone's orders any longer. We located Mother Giselle and are trying to protect her, but she refuses to leave the refugees until we've ensured their safety. That will be hard to do without troops to push the apostates and the Templars out of the area. Commander Cullen asked me to make inquiries of Master Dennett, a retired horse master of Redcliffe, who lives in the area. We tried to contact him about obtaining better horses for the Inquisition, but we've been able, unable to get through the fighting. Lead Scout Harding. A new area unlocked. Okay, accept report. Would you like to gather your party and venture to the Hinterlands now? Um, not right now. Do I have to? You now have access to missions. Mission operations take time and bring the Inquisition resources and rewards. Only one mission per advisor can be active at a time. Okay, so Leliana is just one of our table advisors. Some missions have a preferred type, which results in less time required when undertaken by the associated advisor. Missions may also provide different rewards depending on which advisor completes them. Okay. Rescue soldiers missing in Ferelden. Gather coin. Scout the Storm Coast, the Terran of Hyover, address a nobleman's concerns, the Black Emporium. I have been advised by thousands, not literally thousands, but I have been advised by many people not to click on this, okay? That's the only thing that I know about this game is don't click on this. Everyone and their mother and their children and armies are knocking down my gates to say, don't click on this thing, because Bioware are stupid. So there's a spoiler in here. Um, so don't worry, I'm not going to click on this until my mods tell me that uh, I can click on it. Okay, Which is a shame, because like the Black Emporium, I think, was the DLC from Dragon Age 2, which was really cool. And I enjoyed my time there, so I would like to click on it. But alas, I believe it's DLC, so... We'll let that, we'll let that come later. Hard in Hightown 3, Varric's Revenge though, that's cool. <laughs> 
contact Clan Lavellan. Interesting. Some free marches stuff. That's cool. Uh, gather coin available. All right. How can I look at? Yes. I want to look at Ole. Wait. Does this mean? Oh, there's nothing to do there yet. Valreo. This is cool. Does this mean we can scout stuff and go to Orle? Because I've always wanted to do that. I think I said at the end of Dragon Age 2, I was like, I would love to be able to go to Orle. I think that was when we were talking about when the next game would be set. But this next game, this game seems much more expansive than Dragon Age 2, just by looking at this. Gather coin. Up until now, Inquisition forces have had the benefit of the Chantry's deep coffers. Now the Inquisition is forced to seek out its own sources of revenue if it is going to grow further. Trade in and out of Haven is limited at this point, but there are various opportunities to earn coin, provided the Inquisition is willing to focus its efforts on the matter. Okay, this is very Mass Effect Andromeda. Like, they've got those, like, uh, real-time missions that you do. Oh, you can choose who to send out. Leliana's card is interesting. Why is she scantily clad, though? Why? For some reason. It would seem a simple matter to collect secrets and sell them, with nothing traceable back to the Inquisition. We have soldiers. Let them protect caravans and do other honest work for coin. These character cards are cool. Josephine. Okay. Josephine. Commit that name to memory. Josephine, trading in favors with merchants and the nobility is my specialty. It could earn us a great deal if we're careful. Okay, well, if that's your specialty, then I'm going to choose you. Oh it's, e oh, it's even less time as well. I didn't even notice that. So who you choose actually affects the time. There you go. Cool. Um, so scouting unlocks areas, it looks like. So if we scout the storm coast... We'll be able to go there. Uh, the Terran of Hyover. To whom it concerns... Right, yeah, because we can only do one at a time. The Terran... The Terranier of Hyover wishes to convey our deeper sympathies on the death of Divine Justinia V. The Most Holy was incomparable in her wisdom and dedication to peace, and we had high hopes that her conclave would succeed. We will hold a vigil in Hyever in remembrance of Justinia and quarterly invite the Inquisition to attend. Terran Fergus Kuzland. Uh, I know Terran Kuzland and I knew Justinia. I can't attend, but I could write to him. We have a number of Ferelden officers. We could send an honor guard to Hyever. I like that we can still see what they would say. We should send a diplomatic attaché and some of the Templars who knew the Divine. Um... Nice. Well, let's check the other stuff before I commit to a journey. Address a nobleman's concerns. Herald, your Inquisition says it's for order against chaos, reason in darkness. If you stand by this, come forth and drive the heretics from my lands. They claim to be refugees, but I have seen elves and apostates among them, filthy savages tearing at our roots. Our monarch refuses to send forth armies, and my own knights were decimated at the conclave. I require your aid to return peace to my lands. Prove your loyalty, and I will see you richly rewarded for your faith. Praise the light, Lord Kildarn of Ferelden. This is kind of annoying, because there's some stuff where we've got, like, a nobleman being like, eh, there's elves and apostates, and they suck. And I'm like, I kind of don't want to support that notion. We can take advantage of his raving. My spies can harass the refugees into moving somewhere else to win Lord Kildarn's favor. We could send a few patrols, but I would prefer they help the refugees... Not this Lord Kildon. I kind of like that. There you go. Cullen. He's a kind of a nice guy. Ah, yes. Lord Kildon. A pariah even among his peers. Let us send a polite refusal and nothing more. Interesting. So we can gain favor. Or we can re refuse. Or we can also send patrols that they prefer to help the refugees. This is very interesting. So I'm assuming these would have different uh, outcomes as a result. Contact Clan Lavellan. Clan Lavellan offers greetings to the Inquisition and wishes it well in sealing the breach that has opened in the sky. While some Dalish clans hate humans and wish nothing to do with them, 
Clan Lavellan has always dealt fairly with all and wished only for peace. That said, we have on occasion been forced to defend ourselves from those who saw us only as potential victims. It has come to our attention that a member of our clan is being held captive by your Inquisition. She went to the Conclave only to observe the peace talks between your mages and Templars, and we find it highly unlikely that she intentionally violated your customs. If she has been charged with a crime, we would appreciate hearing of it. If not, it would ease our concerns to hear from her to know that she remains with the Inquisition of her own will. We await, await your reply. Keeper is Stemathorial Lavellan. Interesting. The Dalish respect deeds, not words. Let my elven agents deliver something the clan needs as a show of good faith. My troops can deliver news of your safety and make it clear that the Inquisition should be taken seriously. And your people must be approached carefully. One of our elven scribes could deliver a message and share news of the Inquisition's fair treatment. Why can't I just send a letter? I'm like, hey guys, I'm fine. I'm chilling. <laughs> Interesting. And then Hard in Hightown 3, Varric's Revenge. Ruffles. Okay, who's Ruffles? Who Who is he called Ruffles? Ruffles, I need a favor, actually. Let's call it a loan since I'll pay it back. I've got a letter from my editor in Kirkwall today. She tells me that Hard in Hightown 3, the repunctioning, appeared in print from an Antivan printer a couple weeks ago. I'll give you a moment to contemplate the horror that is that title. I had my contacts in the Merchants Guild look for the author a couple years back. The best they could find out after spending a couple hundred gold was that Pyrrhal Balenforth is a pen name. I could have told them that for free. You've got contacts with the Antivan print houses. Maybe you could find out more than the guild, Varric. Because I think in um, the Mark of the Assassin DLC, when you take Varric with you, you find out that there's like a someone doing, uh, someone writing as like posing to be him, I think. So this is like a follow up to that, which is kind of cool. If this author has evaded the Merchant's Guild, the Crows might be a better choice for investigating him. Ooh, we can't actually choose Cullen. Not participating in this mission. And Josephine, I could ask a friend in Antiva City to look into this matter, I suppose. Ooh, okay. I want to help Varric out immediately. So we're going to choose Liliana for this mission, because Cullen won't do it. The Crows. Let's, let's get the Crows to investigate. And this one only takes 12 minutes, apparently. Cool. I'm going to do that. Um, and then we'll do uh, addressing the nobleman's concerns with Cullen, because he was going to have them help the refugees. So I'll pick him. To work? Cool. And then when they return, we can set them on uh, other things. Cool. That's the war table. Oh, God. Why does Ferelden... Oh. He glitched for a second. Inquisition perks. In the perks menu, you can select perks that provide unique benefits to your party. The number of available points is shown at the bottom. So you can do, you can upgrade forces, secrets, and connections, and then just the Inquisition's coordination and infrastructure. Oh man, hang on. Oh, I need this. <laughs> A detailed study of Thetis's past opens up new dialogue options related to history and the Chantry, an additional 50 XP for each codex entry found. And Teven Taylors are famed for their ability to hide pockets seamlessly in garments. A few words to the Inquisition's friends to the north, and its forces can carry more items in the field. An inventory capacity. The best tailors in Valroyo, experienced in the intricacies of the grand game, can add hidden compartments to armor, allowing even more items to be carried. Uh, adding a potion slot, better techniques in glassworking, exclusive training. A combat point for the Inquisitor only. Oh, there's 50 XP on this one as well, so you can detail study of politics, rhetoric, and those who wield them to best effect. Opens up new dialogue options related to nobles and politics. Well, we want to get into dialogue option upgrades and codex XP as soon as possible. There's quite a few upgrades here, so we'll have a read of these later. But this seems to be where we'll spend a lot of time. In terms of missions, it seems. This is cool, though. Activate quests by... Oh, God. Activate quests by accessing your quest journal. Your active quest is... Oh, oh God. 
There's a lot of codex entries. Oh god, there's even more. <laughs> when not in a dungeon, you can use the quest map to travel to distant locations. So we're in Haven right now. Passing notes. Oh, we can go check this out. World map. Quest one of three. Know thy enemy. Some items recovered in battle may later be worth studying. Give her an item to research. Passing notes. All this artwork's great. The apothecary mentioned that his master, Tegan, was working on something special before he died. And requisition for weapons. Fill the requisition. The hinterlands. Haven, which is where we are now. Wait, so can... Ooh, the world map is so large, though. Does that mean that we can go to these places later? Because that is exciting. It seems that we might be able to click on these later, but we can't at the moment. That's cool. They were like, all right, guys, sorry that Dragon Age 2 was primarily in Kirkwall. We're going to make you be able to travel fucking everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Oh man, okay, there's a lot to take in. There's a lot to take in here. Travel to the hinterlands to speak with Mother Gazelle. There's the Storm Coast, which we can't investigate yet. The Fallow Mire and Haven. So we've got the Inquisitor's Path. As the Inquis Inquisition's power grows, it gains enemies in equal measure. It will take an iron will to bring Thetas back from the brink of chaos. But that is precisely what must be done. Okay. Cool. This is this episode is definitely primarily focused on getting to know the people of Haven, understanding the fundamentals of this game at this current point in time, and reading that sweet sweet lore. So we we won't be engaging on that mission to the uh, to Mother Giselle right at this point in time because we've got plenty more to do. Um, I'm going to spend this point before I forget it now. This. I think we upgraded Storm. No, we upgraded Flame last time, didn't we? Um, let's see. After you land a critical hit, your next spell doesn't trigger a cooldown period. Let's get that. We'll focus on the, the Pyromancer tree, I reckon, for a little bit. Now, let's have a look at all these beautiful codex entries that we unlocked so we can learn about everything that we just engaged in. It only pops up with like four notifications at a time, so it's like slowly lets us know that we've just unlocked a whole bunch more. Why doesn't this show up as new? This is weird. Hang on. All right, Liliana shows up as new. Or maybe he did, but the icon... Sometimes the new icon is hard to see. Cullen... Whatever you have heard of Kirkwall's Rebellion, the truth is far worse. I would spare you that. What remains of Kirkwall's Templars have been under my command for the past few years. We have done what we could to assist with the city's recovery, to restore some semblance of order. But my time here is done. Seeker Pentagast has approached me. She wishes to stop the war between mages and Templars. She has been recruiting men and women to the cause and wishes me to oversee the group's military concerns. If the conclave goes well, then we will not be needed. If not, we stand ready. I have decided to take Seeker Pentagast's offer. The circles have fallen. I can give no more to the Templar Order, nor it to me. The Maker has shown me a new path. I must take it. Okay. Cool. Look at that guy. Just such a punchable face, dude. Just such a punchable face. All right. Um, Josephine Montillier, Seeker Cassandra. Josephine Montillier is a noble from the nation of Antiva. She was educated in Val Royale, where she built connections among the court. Once she finished her schooling, at a surprisingly young age, Lady Montillier became the official diplomat between King Fol Folgeno of Antiva to Empress Celine of Orléans. The appointment suits her. She is well-traveled, familiar with many forms of etiquette, and by all accounts, a skilled negotiator. In that endorsement, if that endorsement does not suffice, Josephine is a personal friend. I have faith in her. We require someone both influential and trustworthy to be an ambassador for the Inquisition. You cannot tell me you would prefer to take the job yourself. Liliana. 
She has many names. Most know her as Sister Liliana or the Nightingale. Some refuse to speak her name at all, referring to her only as left hand of the divine, the shadow behind the sunburst throne. The spy master Marjolaine trained Liliana from a young age. For years, Liliana was Marjolaine's instrument in the great game of Orlais. While Liliana was devoted to Marjolaine, the reverse Oh, I've just left my, lost my place. The reverse was not true. Marjolaine betrayed Liliana and almost succeeded in killing her. Liliana survived the betrayal thanks to revered mother Dorothea. Following this betrayal, Liliana spent several years in a cloister in Ferelden, hiding from her past. Inspired by revered mother Dorothea, Liliana dedicated herself to her faith, discovering peace in a simple life of devotion. But when the fifth blight began, she received what she believed a vision from the Maker. This prompted her to leave her sanctuary, taking up arms against the Darkspawn. Several years after the defeat of the Archdemon, Liliana received a summons from Dorothea, now Divine Justinia V. She returned to Olay to become an agent of the Sunburst Throne. Justinia perished in the explosion that destroyed the Divine Conclave, and Liliana became a founding member and spymaster of the New Inquisition. Leliana seems absolutely integral to this storyline, which begs the question of like, and also in Dragon Age 2, she appears multiple times. So it begs the question, she can die in Dragon Age Origins. I'm assuming that it's just going to be, she would end up just being like, reports of my death were greatly exaggerated, which seems like a way just to be like, all right, guys, Leliana is too important to randomly die just because you poisoned the ashes. I really wonder how that would be addressed. She'd probably just be like, oh yeah, I was just knocked out or something, which is kind of interesting. Otherwise, I would ha I would really doubt, right, that Leliana would be replaced by someone else for this game because it seems that she's integrated... Uh, very specifically for it to be her, you know? The Rebel Mages. Whereas the Circle was established not merely to protect the world from mages, but also to allow mages to practice their arts safely and without fear, and whereas under Lord Seeker's Lambert's command, the Templars sworn to protect all people, including mages, from the harmful effects of magic, have insisted persecuted mages with such biased judgment as to worsen the problems they were meant to mitigate, and whereas the right of tranquility intended as a tool of last resort to stop uncontrolled mages from hurting themselves or others has instead been used for punitive and political purposes to silence dissent and inhibit civilized discourse, and whereas Andraste herself intended the relationship between the mage and Templar to be one of practitioner and protector, not prisoner and jailer, and this contract has been broken, leaving mages in fear for their lives from those sworn to protect them. Now, therefore, the Circle of Magi declares the following. Do you know how long that went on before there was a full stop? That's the definition of a run-on sentence. God damn, they really ran with it. Crazy. We, the mages of Ferelden and Orlais, do hereby dissolve the circles and renounce our sworn submission to the Order of the Templars effective immediately. We reiterate Andraste's assertion that magic was made to serve man, not rule over him, and we state unequivocally that we will use our abilities only to defend ourselves from, the, from those who would see us relinquish our lives and freedoms under the presumption of guilt for crimes we have not committed. We condemn those practitioners of magic who, through illness of mind and understandable but misguided anger at those who oppress them, would use their maker-given powers to threaten innocent lives. And we pledge to age uh, any pledge. Bleh, I'm reading so much. Sorry. And we pledge to aid any illegitimate. We pledge to aid any legitimate and impartial government in bringing these lawless apostates to justice. Sometimes you read so many words, they blend and my brain turns to mush. I apologize. We look earnestly to a future of cooperation between all peoples of Thetis, free from persecution and prejudice, and hope to build a better world alongside all who approach us with friendship instead of fear. Yours in service to Andraste and the Maker, the Free Mages of Thetis. A leaflet distributed in towns and villages across Orlais and Ferelden. 
To be fair, this one is very wordy. That one's very wordy. The Templar Order, end of an accord. Most holy, the Seekers are well aware of the part you played in the rebellion. You call me to the Grand Cathedral in the middle of the night on urgent business, only to speak of trivial matters. And then, when I return to the White Spire, I discover chaos and one of your agents in the midst of the apostates. Did you think I would not notice? Did you believe yourself above repercussions for such acts? It was a dark day when the Chantry placed such an incapable woman upon the sunburst throne. I will not stand idle and watch you destroy what ages of tradition and righteousness have built. In the 20th year of the Divine Age, the Navaran Accord was signed. The Seekers of Truth lowered our banner and agreed to serve as the Chantry's right hand. And together we created the Circle of Magi. With the Circle no more, I hereby declare the Accord null and void. Neither the Seekers of Truth nor the Templar Order recognize Chantry authority, and instead we will perform the Maker's work as it was meant to be done, as we see fit. Signed this day on the 40th year of the Dragon Age, Lord Seeker Lambert Van Reeves. Letter sent to Divine Justinia from the former Lord Seeker. Wow. And the Templar Order, traditional role. It's really weird how sometimes depending on where you are scrolled in one codex entry, when you click on another, you're automatically scrolled down instead of it being at the top. It's kind of weird. Often portrayed as stoic and grim, the Order of Templars was created as the martial arm of the Chantry, armed with the ability to dispel and resist magic in addition to their formidable combat talents. Templars are uniquely qualified to act as both a foil for apostates mages who refuse to submit to the authority of the Circle, and a first line of defense against the dark powers of blood mages and abominations. While mages often resent the Templars as symbols of the Chantry's control over magic, the people of Theta see them as saviors and holy warriors, champions of all that is good, armed with piety enough to protect the world from the ravages of foul magic. In reality, the Chantry's militant arm looks first for skilled warriors with unshakable faith in the Maker, with a flawless moral center as a secondary concern. Templars must carry out their duty with an emotional distance, and the Order of Templars prefers soldiers with religious fervor and absolute loyalty over paragons of virtue who might question orders when it comes time to make difficult choices. The Templar's power derives from the substance lyrium, a mineral believed to be the raw element of creation. While mages use lyrium in their arcane spells and rituals, Templars ingest the primordial mineral to enhance their abilities to resist and dispel magic. Lyrium use is regulated by the Chantry, but some Templars suffer from lyrium addiction, the effects of which include paranoia, obsession, and dementia. Templars knowingly submit themselves to this treatment in the service of the Order and the Maker. It is this sense of ruthless piety that most frightens mages when they draw the Templars' attention. When the Templars are sent to eliminate a possible blood mage, there is no reasoning with them. And if the Templars are prepared, the mage's magic is all but useless. Driven by their faith, the Templars are one of the most feared and respected forces in Thedas. There you go. And um, this note actually triggered something for me is um, I forgot to ask Varric about the Red Lyrium stuff. Uh, I forgot that that was even a option after we asked him about his personal life. So I'll go back to Varric and I'll ask him about that Red Lyrium stuff. Totally slipped my mind. Tell me about Red Lyrium, please. The Red Lyrium we found at the temple seemed to upset you. My brother Bartrand and I sort of discovered Red Lyrium during an expedition in the Deep Roads. We located an ancient taig, so old it barely looked dwarven. There was this idol there made of it. Bartrand brought it back to the surface, and, well, everything's gone downhill from there. What is it exactly? So what is it? Just another kind of lyrium? The red stuff is lyrium like a dragon is a lizard. It's not just a different color. It has a whole host of weirdness all its own. I've written to every mining cast house in Orzammar. No one's seen this stuff before or knows where it came from. What makes it special? Regular lyrium can mess you up pretty badly, but you have to ingest it for that to happen. Red lyrium messes with your mind when you're just near the stuff. You hear singing, get violent, paranoid, and then it does creepy shit. Makes things float, brings statues to life. 
It also turned Kirkwall's night commander to Lyrium. Everyone's been kept at least a hundred paces from it since. Oh yeah, because she would have just been she was turned into it, so she became the stuff. That's really interesting. They have to like seal it in a box, and then put that box in a box, and then put rub that box in another box, and then put that box in another little box, and smash it into a million tiny pieces. How did the Red Lyrium get in the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I don't know. So as far as I knew, the only piece to make it to the surface was destroyed. And the location of the tag it came from is a secret. Did someone find more of it in the deep roads? That's not a cheery thought. There you go. Pretty much what we already knew, but it's a nice little recap to get it from Varric. I think that's enough on Red Lyrium. Yeah, not really my favorite subject. Glad we convinced him not to do it. Oh, it actually comes up with a quest. Okay. It comes up with a quest. Interesting. There you go. Magic. Spirits and demons. When first I summoned her, she was a rose, unwithering, unchanging, and unthorned. A spirit of th the purest love one knows, who never hated, coveted, or scorned. A second time I drew her across the veil and shared a walk, a dance, a stolen kiss. With such a perfect beauty, pure and pale, no woman could compare, no man resist. It's like, it's so funny that it's like, as soon as I read this from the first line, you're like, okay, an encounter with a desire demon. Then in my weakness, I essayed a third, though magisters their warning did impart. She broke my binding with a single word and said this smiling as she clutched my heart. Though love I was, your passion's changing fire has forged this spirit into a cruel desire. Sonnet 126, The Lover and His Spirit, from A Chant for Dreamers by Magister Horatius. So, interestingly enough, a little, a little sonnet about spirits and demons. A love spirit that was then transformed into a desire demon based on the, the man's um, sort of almost obs obsession and passion to come from that it is i can see immediately based on the like just even this codex entry and solus's description that this game is going to try to change our perspective on how demons are viewed in dragon age origins and to an extent dragon age 2 demons and spirits start off as separate things very separate things demons are a sure thing and there are also spirits like justice and then dragon age 2 blends things a little bit more we have justice merging with a human becoming something else and now dragon age inquisition is going hey one in the same almost they can change you know wisdom can become something else and that's i feel like that as a result and what's kind of exciting about that is that will, that may end up retroactively changing how we've viewed some things in the past in earlier games, which is exciting because we only go off the information we have with us um, at hand, right? So there are certain opinions and certain things that we've gone through in previous games that if we do get some new information in this game with stuff like this, we'll look on it differently, which will be quite interesting. I like this kind of stuff and I'm very curious to see how far they're going to take this and if we'll actually get any confirmation on on this kind of thing. But I like it a lot. Places we have the Hinterlands, my Lord Arl Tegan, who shall forever be known unfortunately for the dancing gif. I retired to the Hinterlands for peace and quiet away from politics because the wide open spaces were perfect to let my horses run. Instead, the war between the mages and the Templars has turned your beautiful hills into a series of burning battlefields. The farmers who live in the hinterlands are good folk. Many of them left Redcliffe Village because they couldn't bear to be there anymore, not after the Blight and the Walking Dead left so many bad memories. Now we've got apostates running around setting fire to anyone who looks at them sideways, and Templars looting houses and cutting down those who protest as mage sympathizers. My wife, Elena, set off our field hands to stay with her family in the east, but there are a lot of poor people here with nowhere to go. We get more refugees every day, 
This village attacked by mad mages, or that farmstead burned to the ground by Templars who can't tell a hoe from a staff. I suppose you're stretched thin, but anything you can do to lessen the burden of these poor folk would be much appreciated. I'll do as I can, and if your men need better mounts, say the word. Best of luck to you, my lord. Remember not to let Duchess puff out her gut when you saddle her. Yours in service, Dennett. A letter from Redcliffe's former horse master to Arl Tegan of Redcliffe. Undelivered. Undelivered. And then we can see which resources we can find in areas. It's kind of interesting that they include this in places, but definitely interesting information. You're like, if I need this for an upgrade, I can go here to grab it. So that's cool. There's our little tutorial sections. Perfect. Okay. Codex. And they're ready to report in already because I guess it goes in real time. And then we've got an hour for the one with uh, Josephine. The Inquisition cannot remain, Ambassador. If you can't prove it was founded on Justinia's order. This is an inopportune time, Marquis. More of the faithful flock here each day. But allow me to introduce you to the brave soul who risked her life to slow the magic of the breed. Mistress Lavelan, this is the Marquis Durellion, one of Divine Justinia's greatest. And supporters. the rightful owner of Haven. How does Durellion lend Justinia these lands for pilgrimage? This Inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife, Lady Machin of Denver, has claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelden. We were honored to lend this use to Divine Justinia. She is a... She was a woman of supreme merit. I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy grounds. Interesting, considering the Inquisition was begun by the left and right hands of the Divine. I've seen no written records from Sister Liliana or Seeker Pentacus that Justinia approved the Inquisition. If he won't take her at her word, I'm afraid Seeker Pentagast must challenge him to a duel. What? It is a matter of honor among the Navarans. Shall I arrange the bout for tonight? <laughs> no. No. Perhaps my reaction to the Inquisition's presence was somewhat hasty. <sighs> we face a dark time, Your Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. She would, in fact, trust us to forge new alliances to the benefit of all, no matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montilier. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. Okay, nice. <laughs> He's like, ah, actually, on second thought, I, I uh, no. Do the Durelions actually have a claim on this place? His Grace's position is not so strong as he presents it. Despite their Ferelden relations, the Durelions are Orlesian. If the Marquis wishes to claim Haven, Empress Selene must negotiate with the Ferelden on his behalf. Her current concerns are a bit larger than minor property disputes. Okay. I'm so pleased the Marquis isn't tossing us out into the cold. His grace is only the first of many dignitaries we must contend with. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. And each visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. May I ask, what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. <laughs> what sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orle. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. The Inquisition is lucky to have you as an advocate, Lady Montillier. Thank you. Let us hope so. Thedas's politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. All right. So this is where Josephine shows out with uh, 
Minerv. What may I do for you? Hmm? I have to. I have to think about the angle that I approach people for the <laughs> for the camera. Tell me how you came to work for the Inquisition again. I'd been considering leaving my post in Antiva for a new challenge when Leliana recruited me. There's such unrest in Thedas, and the Inquisition seems a promising method to stop it. It's to everyone's benefit if we prevent the Mage Templar conflict from spreading further. So was it the prospect of stability that drew you here? The full impact of the Mage Rebellion has yet to be felt, and that was before the death of the Divine. The violence must be curbed before we see it turn to full-scale war. Josephine's very talented. She's one of those people that can like uh, that can text without looking at their phone because they just know where the uh, they just know where the letters are. She's just she's just talking to us and she's still writing. She's great. <laughs> I can only imagine the bloodshed if it escalates further. I'm afraid history holds many examples of what will happen if it does. It's very interesting when you're talking to characters that are companions and characters that are not companions, because then there isn't that level of approval and disapproval that you need to like worry about, I suppose. I kind of wish that approval was almost like any character could change their opinion of you based on how you interact with them. Like that level of depth would be really cool because then it only becomes, it only affects how you interact with your companions at some form, if you're trying to get their approval or not. Um, but then when you interact with other people, it's almost like free reign. You don't have to worry as, as much. And then it's also a shame because it's like, you're only forced to form relationships and flirt with your companions sometimes, you know? And I'm like, can we flirt with Josephine? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. How do you and Leliana know each other? We moved through similar circles in Norlay. I believe we actually met in Val Royale. Leliana was quite an accomplished player of the game by then. What's the game? And why have I just lost it? What exactly do you mean when you say the game? Ah, forgive me. The game refers to the slow duels of influence among the noble and powerful of Orlais. It's a rather light-hearted name for the matter, but Orlesians are fond of playful touches. <laughs> oh, I was like, tell, I just said, tell me about yourself and it just disappeared, but no, it just goes into something else. How does... Tell me about yourself, open up, do you believe I am holy? Tell me about yourself, by asking about me. <laughs> what business are the Montilliers in, exactly? We began as merchants. My ancestors founded the first trade routes to Rivain. We once sent entire fleets across the Waking Sea. But not anymore? Ah, no. Uh, these days, our vessels are a touch more modest. Okay. What did you do before coming here? I had the great honor of serving Antiva's crown as ambassador to Orlais. I'm also first in line to become the head of House Montillier, though my siblings attend to our mercantile affairs. How strong are your past loyalties? I would never have given up my position if I did not intend to fully commit to the Inquisition. We cannot fall back on borders. Antiva is as threatened as any country by the rebellions. If anything, the alliances I forged there may help our current cause. Do you think the Inquisition will continue after we seal the breach? If we prove ourselves by healing the breach, people may turn to us for other things. Protection, counsel, justice. The Inquisition offered these once to those in need. Tell me, do you believe I was saved by Andraste at the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I should much like to believe so, Your Worship. The miracles Andraste performed were so long ago, they're difficult to picture. If it were truly her and the Fade who saved you, well, in any case, many already believe you walk in the Maker's Light. Let's speak later. Another time. There was still more. Good day to you. What exactly does your job entail? I meet with ambassadors from various factions and countries, and cement alliances with them. 
We are a young cause. Diplomacy is essential to our credibility. Then you speak for the Inquisition with these nobles? I do. Someone must foster goodwill on our behalf, as well as prevent controversy as news of us spreads. How heavily are our actions scrutinized? Make no mistake. Every noble house, every throne, is waiting to see what the Inquisition does next. Many are willing to pledge support, if offers are made in just the right fashion. I intend to see that they are. What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. We must aim for more. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? Sir Griffith of Denerim, a most distinguished knight of the realm. He's defeated darkspawn, slain demons, chased down abominations. Just don't ask him about it over dinner. He spares no detail. Griffith! Goddamn. What may I do for you? What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. Any thoughts on the people here? Who did you mean? <laughs> oh, we can just really go in depth on asking about the specific people that we have with us, okay. What's your impression of Solus? I suppose I should be wary of an apostate, but our elven mage has conducted himself with the utmost propriety. And he has the most fascinating stories. I was thinking of Varric. Oh, I could listen to his tales for hours. He actually let me read a chapter of his next book he's writing. Oh, my friends would be sick with envy if they knew. It's excellent, but a bit different from his past works. Only three beheadings so far. <laughs> I was thinking of Cassandra. Seeker Pentagast is a princess of the Kingdom of Nevara, although that barely seems important to her. She was not interested when I asked if we might make use of her royal relations. Still, the Inquisition would not have formed without Cassandra. She's an extraordinarily driven woman. She's like, I refuse to be a Nepo baby. I refuse. Commander Cullen came to mind. The commander is an intelligent, cautious man. I'm grateful he's in charge of our sending army. Still, he does sometimes resemble the man with a hammer to whom everything appears as a nail. <laughs> okay. Let's speak later. Another time. That's cool. Okay, I like that. You're the Herald. Or, well, the one they're calling the Herald, anyway. It's odd to see them accepting a mage as their hero, especially a Dalish elf. One look at your face and it's clear you were never part of a circle. My name is Maneve. I research demons and other creatures. Seeker, Pentagast, and I use what I find to help the soldiers fight them. Okay. You said you were a mage? No, just an apprentice. Circle mages must prove themselves in a ritual called the Harrowing. I was never very good at magic. I've got just enough talent to be a danger to other people. But when the mages rebelled, people like me had nowhere to go. The Templars would have killed us. Luckily, Seeker Pentagast took me in, along with the Tranquil I was protecting. You said Cassandra has you researching creatures. Yes. If you find anything interesting in your travels, I'd appreciate you bringing it to me. I may be able to find some weakness our soldiers can exploit when fighting various creatures. But at the least, some materials are useful for making potions or gear for the Inquisition. I'm surprised that even an apprentice mage wouldn't join the Rebellion. I don't like using magic to fight. I'm not good at it either. I liked studying. I liked performing rituals that helped us unlock the secrets of the Vale. I liked having the Templars around to keep us safe. Oh, so we get a we get a Dalish okay. A Dalish option. You might have done well among the Dalish. Our mages are encouraged to study safely. Fenner will take the Dalish. Don't let my lack of Valisleen fool you. Lethleen. I was a proud member of my clan until my magic manifested. You know what happens when they have too many mages. They gave me a pack and sent me into the woods to find my own life. I was seven years old. Okay, that is unfortunate. I'm so sorry. I stumbled into a village, starving and cold a few weeks later. I started using magic to scare predators away. 
The villagers saw me make fire in my fist. They were terrified and wanted to kill me. Templars saved me from them. They gave me food and clothes and took me to the circle. I've seen what life is like without the Templars, and I want no part of it. I just want to study. You said that you were keeping some of the Tranquil safe? Yes. The mages took some of them when my circle rebelled, but the rest were forgotten. Most circle mages look down on the Tranquil, or try to pretend they don't exist. They don't have any emotions. They can barely take care of themselves, can't defend themselves at all. It's a shame. I like them better than most people. I'm glad they have someone who cares about them. They deserve better. They're polite, they're rational, and they'll never get angry at you. When they study, they have a focus no normal person could ever match. But the Templars, even some of the mages, mistreated them just because they could. The Tranquil never fought back. If not for that, I... I don't know. Doesn't really matter now. Why did you decide to research dangerous creatures? I like the outdoors. The idea of the outdoors, anyway. When some monster is coming at you, glowing eyes and burning claws, it's terrifying. But once you know how it works, you can deal with it. It's just another part of the world. So much of this world is only frightening because we don't understand it. Getting some interesting perspectives on, on stuff like this, which is very good. I'm liking this a lot. And this is a very natural thing, is we are usually scared and reject the things that we don't understand. People just need to be more open-minded to things. Maybe I should be more open-minded to blood magic. Because <laughs> I just don't understand it. I found something the demons left behind. Can you use it? Yes, that's very helpful. Just leave it there and the Tranquil and I will examine it. Cool. Why is it that... There are characters like Josephine and Varric and stuff that get a full outline, but then Minev is like, yes, you may only outline my head and my hands because I am actually just floating limbs. This body here is an illusion. Yes. Good. Yes, good. All right, dream rags removed. Please tell me if you find something. Okay, cool. I've turned in some research. I have almost leveled up. Uh, let's check out the War Council because we've got some reports. I'll try and capitalize on the timing of that. So I can, when they've completed stuff, I can send them out on other things. Address no one's concerns. Commander Cullen, am I to understand you are in charge of the soldiers trampling on my lawns, providing food and refuge to the scrabble of filth? Borrowing into my land, a plague on you, sir, for spitting in the face of an honest petitioner, for taking advantage of my distress. Did my wretched neighbor, Ban Traft, whisper in your ear, tell me what he paid you so that I may at least know the price of treachery, sir? My only consolation is that a few of rank and file have gone to join your farce of an inquisition. In bitter disgust, Lord Kildarn, we did gain some influence, and I wonder if that influence has been gathered with Ban Traft instead for helping out. Interesting. No dialogue to come of it, though. Hard in Hightown, my dear Leliana, your author friend is truly a mystery. Our search uncovered only a string of foreign accounts. The trail of coin led from Antiva to Devinta to the Free Marches and Orlais. Someone hid their tracks well, but not well enough. Your writer is in Kirkwall. And remember, you owe me a favor. Okay. We got an amulet of power. Interesting. Okay. Well, we can do the Terran of High Ever. So we checked this one out, which was... I knew Terran Kuzland, I knew Justinia. So we, she can write to him. Or an honor guard could be sent. And I think that is... The only one that we can do at the moment. Oh, hang on, though. There's Contact Clan Lavellan as well. Which would they appreciate more? Deliver something the clan needs as a show of good faith, or deliver news of safety and make it clear they should be taken seriously. I feel like they might like Liliana's more. Let's send Liliana Let's over there. And then for the Terran of Hyver, we will send the honor guard. To work. Thanks, team. Why does my oh my clothes change when I go in here? Why? 
Okay, only when I go in there. And then I gain some influence. Perfect. Uh, Varric approves. Oh, because we helped him out on his thing. Right, I've got a uh, amulet of power. Only for Varric. Okay, well, there you go. Ah! Gain an ability point when equipped. Single use. Why can't I... I can't give it to you. Oh, because it was a single use and now it disappears. Gotcha. Cool. And now I guess I'll just give you that. <laughs> oh, it's so weird that we can give them... Um, armor, but only the DLC gear at the moment. Oh, no, we can give him the adventurer hat. Look at that hat, Mark. Right. Dashing. God. We'll get to that. We'll get to that at one point. But with, with that one... We are going to bring this episode of Dragon Age Inquisition to a close. We will uh, investigate and chat with other people uh, next time before we head out. So we can see that Cassandra and Cullen are out there and Liliana's out there too. Uh, so we'll definitely have a chat to them. We'll have a look at these quests that we can do and then travel to the Hinterlands to speak with Mother Giselle as well. Uh, I'm really liking the introduction to this place, getting to know the characters, sitting ourselves in the lore and understanding what's going on at this current point in time. It's very, very enjoyable. I hope you have liked this episode and next time there will be much more for us to learn as well. But I'm having a great time so far and I'm excited to see what is uh what lies ahead for us so thank you so much for watching this episode of inquisition and i'll see you next time